uh, Paul, Paul Bradley is uh, the president of Asia International. Uh, if you look at Asia International, Asia International is not unknown. They are listed in the Mumbai Stock Exchange. And basically, they own companies such as uh, technology companies such as Cyberlog, owns 3PL, 4PL company. So he has different points of view. And essentially, I took him as a representative for challenges rising out of India as well. Today is like China was 12 years ago. It is raw. Infrastructure is a great challenge, and it is about to explode at an incredible level. As an example, the organized retail sector is 2%. In four to five years, as Richard knows, it will be 20%. That's 87 billion US dollars of consumer spending. China's at 40% now. This is an explosion. And what we find, uh, we're a fusion company, we're a holding company, so we're mixing different entities from Cyberlog, but what we've done is we realize locally, the local players are only strong in spaces of cities, not across India. And the tax structure, which is only changing now, the VAT system, prohibits regional uh, across state distribution, very similar to China 14 years ago, when each province was a mini country and then it opened up. India starts opening up this year, where you can start to have hubs and sub-hubs and 100 SCZs coming up. So it's going from extremely backward to a jolt. And hopefully we're trying to learn from the experiences of China what not to do and what to do. Uh, but in our case, what we find is, is global players will come in, but India is India. And you have to have the local knowledge. You have to have the local political contacts. You have to have the local infrastructure knowledge. And yet the local companies don't have SOPs. They don't have the technology. They don't have the, the standardization that companies like Gillette and Eastman would expect. So in our case, we're trying to fuse it. We've, we, we just set up one new venture called BDP Genco. And those are two US multinational companies, uh, one in logistics, one in retail logistics, linked to an Indian company. So we can kind of combine the expertise of the local market and contacts with the global knowledge and expertise and networks of two US companies. And I think India has tremendous potential, but the reality is it's backward trying to leap forward. And there are already lessons in China, so we don't have to make the same mistakes, but it's an incremental move. And I think technology is the great tool. As Tom said, first the fundamentals the SOPs, the standardization, the KPIs, they don't exist. They're just coming through. I mean, Dennis is here, companies like Flextronics already have them in India, but most companies don't. We just started a new venture where we're getting some retail companies to outsource their logistics. It hasn't been done in India before. But the only way to do that is to use IT to give them control and to come in very carefully incrementally. India today is still all about cost. But it can't go forward without building partnerships. And I think one of our challenges on this panel today to discuss is when does cost and execution matter? And when does partnership matter? Because some of the things that ensure long-term stability of operations and real breakthroughs in terms of cutting edge, innovative solutions, it only comes out of partnerships, not out of one-year contracts that are up for tender every year. So I think the market in Asia, uh, and I'm just using India as an example, that's the last jumping point, but overall in Asia, we've always been told the US and Europe are the models to learn from. That's where we learn the, what to do right and how we in Asia can learn to adapt that expertise. I think it's wrong. I think the next five years, the most innovative supply chain solutions will be driven from Asia. I think the most modern infrastructure in the world is now in Asia. The ports, the airports, uh, the highway systems going up in China, Indian future, long future. But I think we need to now stop talking about what we learned from the US and Europe and how do we drive solutions across Asia where the technology and the infrastructure is actually ahead of the world now. So I, I'm a huge optimist on how we drive solutions, but we can only drive them with partnerships. 
How, how are those partnerships formed? What, what are the ownership regulations for logistics companies there? For example, do you have the restrictions that you had in the China market up to two or three years ago? Well, we, we did something a little radical. We did a reverse IPO. So we just bought over a company and then flipped its assets. So we're an Indian company overnight. And then we bought over four companies in the last 12 months. So that gave us instant breakout. And we've also covered the Middle East. Uh, in some areas, India has constraints, uh, and in other areas, it doesn't. The political constraints that existed in China with uh, Class A forwarding licenses and things are less visible, but how you handle customs in India is still something you want to leave as a local solution for obvious reasons. And at the same time, this, each state had, had very tight controls and regulations. It's about to rip open. So there will be a VAT tax. The regulations restricting movement of product between the states is changing very quickly. And I think in the next year, the market will open up quite dramatically. And that's a political pressure because uh, as Thailand uh, will learn today in terms of the new regulation where you can only own less than 50% of some companies, if you change the rules, the money goes somewhere else. If customs is inefficient, then a hub becomes Singapore and Hong Kong instead of Malaysia. If, if uh, you put barriers to trade and logistics, then more money will go into the countries in Asia that embrace it. And I think India has learned that lesson, and politically now with Prime Minister Singh, they're aggressively moving forward. There are two and a half times more billionaires in India than there are in China, actually. And now they're bringing their money back. So I think the most important point about regulation is if you want talent and if you want money, you have to move faster. And I think India, from being very backward where it was, I think it's about to leapfrog because it's learned that lesson.